welcome friends to this monthly meeting that we have so that we can all remain on track on our spiritual journeys this is necessary because our mind is such given little leeway it tries to run into this world and the vote its powerful instrument called attention to worldly things it does not want to put attention on the self which is giving all the energy the life to the mind so therefore the mind is so designed it wants to run out and the reason for that is that the creation was created by mind to enjoy to experience therefore the mind is occupied in the very function for which it was created can't blame the mind it just so happens that the mind is designed for experiencing creation therefore it goes into creation it was not designed for the creator it was not designed to go within itself and find out who is sitting behind giving it life but when we are tired of this experience of the mind constantly looking for experiences outside and not only experience variety of experience if you give the mind one experience and keep on repeating that it gets fed up bored wants another experience therefore it's always constantly looking for new experiences all outside and here we get together we are on a spiritual journey to discover ourselves we have reached a point where we think we have had enough of this journey outside we think we came here to enjoy this creation this universe but if all is not a very enjoyable place it was supposed to be a nice show it was quite a nice show when we were looking at it from a distance then we are looking from our true home all the creation looks so beautiful the problem only started when we wanted to come closer and closer to the experience of creation we came so close that we did we were not satisfied just by being an observer of creation we decided to become part of the creation did a very simple trick the self the immortal unit of consciousness operating within the totality of consciousness decided to go so close to the creation that it picked up an actor on the stage of creation a human being and went and sat in the head of that human being and began to believe i am that human being i am that actor now had it realized that i am just in the actor would not be too bad one could sit inside comfortably in the head of an actor and still watch the show but then the show won't look so real to introduce reality into the show the self the soul the unit of consciousness our true self decided to block awareness of its own self so that the experience of the character in whose head we are sitting becomes our experience great way to make experience real great way to create reality otherwise it was just a show on a multi dimensional screen we call space and time so it's a very simple thing but having got into the head of one character for a short period by becoming the character we took over all the liabilities and assets of that character what were the liabilities and assets of the character the character was in a play 
which was governed by a law of cause and effect and was based on karma, the character's position in the drama was based upon what the character did in a past life or in this life earlier. And the self began to identify not only with the character but with the karma which didn't belong to it. There was no karma at all on the soul. Soul has never taken any karma but by just sitting in the head of one character who is governed by the law of karma for a particular level of creation which we call physical reality. In physical reality, we sat in one character, became the character, took on all the burdens, good and bad, good karma, bad karma, get punished for bad karma, get rewarded for good karma and we began to get involved in the reward and punishment that was designed for the character. It was a story. The story of that character and we became the character and locked ourselves from our inner knowledge. But in spite of that, we had decided not to take a risk. If we want to go out of our house, we must carry the key with us to go open the door and get back. It would be a great mistake just to say, I am really out of the house, so I throw the key back into the house and I, I am lost outside. No, we did not make that mistake. We did carry the key of our home, of our true home with us. And the key was very simple. That the drama we create outside, in which we enter into the head of one character, that character with us in it should be able to meet an experience which should be the key for us to remind ourselves this is not me, I am sitting inside the character, the self is real inside, let me go in and find out. Well designed key. It's not a physical key, it's a quantum key, if I use modern physiology. And it is a key which can be operated. So what happens when we are ready from inside, not as a character, not even, even as the mind that created the character, but as a self, as a soul. When we feel this is the time to use the key, we operate the key and by coincidence another human being appears in our life who says, this is not your place. Your home is being carried with you, where you are sitting. You are sitting inside the head of a character. Go inside, find out who you are. And if you find out who you are, you will also know where your home is. As simple as that. And such a human being will come and tell you not only the method of going in, will say, if you go in, I will go with you. Big thing. I am not trying to teach you something to go, how to go within and go. I will go with you. This is an arrangement you made. You may not know who I am. You think I am another human being, just like you. I, I am a character like you, created the same way by your mind in the same way like you created all the other characters on the show. But if you go inside where you are carrying the key to go to your true home, I will be with you. Such a human being comes into our life when we have arranged, pre-arranged in the text of the drama, in the script of the drama. When the script is prepared, all the characters are acting according to the script, including the character in whose head we are sitting. But when the script says, now is the time, we pre-arranged, enough for us, we have had enough of it, we have to go, the script says, such a human being will now appear. Predetermined. 
we come to know there's time for that moment in the script has come when something happens not on the body not in sense perceptions not in a sensory experience in the world not any miraculous things happening outside something happens inside not even in our thoughts not even in the mind apparently beyond that inside something happens which makes us feel i am seeking something but i am not sure what it is i know there is some truth i can't put my hand on it i can't put my finger on it there is something i am looking for i don't know what it is certainly it is something deep my thoughts cannot resolve it i discuss that seeking coming inside with my thoughts and my thought dismiss them the thoughts take me back outside therefore there is something inside pulling me that wants me to open the door and use the key i don't know what the key is i don't know what it is the key is already operating another human being has appeared to explain exactly what's going on in our head our questions when we come across that person by coincidence by arrangement made earlier of which we are not aware because we have blocked ourselves when that person appears he gives answers to some of our mental questions some of our intuitive seeking which we haven't even asked him we wonder does he really know us or is our mind just giving some trouble to us again this debate in the mind goes on creates doubt sometimes fear but the seeking inside keeps on overwhelming the mind say it is still there you can't think it out you can't reason it out the seeking is still there this seeking is not coming from the mind is not coming from the senses not coming from the body is coming from the true self our own true self the soul so soul is opening the key and looks like we are seekers it's just a step in the opening of the lock that the seeking is the first step the appearance of a human being who respond to that seeking in a very unusual way because we are drawn to that person by simple things he is telling us which resonate with us as if we are thinking like that it's a very strange thought that we are thinking something another person is talking as if he knows our thoughts about seeking so that is what pulls us towards that human being and when the human being says there is no truth outside the key to your true home is within you go in and i am not saying go in and find the way i will go with you but we say you are outside you are just like us how can you go in just take one step at least at least test it out am i only outside or also inside inside yourself the seeker so with willy nilly we persuade our mind okay let us give a trial and we spend years trying to see is it true is it really there no nothing is happening it was just mind made up sometime we spend a lifetime or two in the search but the search never ends the seeking never ends it's still there therefore at a certain point in time we begin to take it seriously to look inside what is there and as we remember that human being whom we saw outside we remember that we can't forget that human being inside because of a strange feeling of love we had for that human being which we never had for somebody else like that other love could be easily explained and this pull is not being easily explained 
Why did I want to meet? Was it because what he was saying resonated with me? Was it something else? Was it that my experience with that human being shows that he is different from others in some ways? Is his affection, attention to me different from others? Why do I feel there is a difference? The memory of that human being becomes easier and easier to have in our head because of these incidents happening outside with the human being. Eventually, the human being who is outside appears inside and says, I was always inside. You didn't look inside, therefore I appeared outside. I was always inside. I am part of the key to take you back to your true home. You are in it. We are very happy. We start on a journey exploring worlds and creations which we had not seen before. We were so used to one single reality, the physical reality. The rest was all imaginary stuff. And suddenly now, we find the imaginary stuff was not so imaginary as we thought. And we can do so many things in that state of being, which we could never do in our physical life. We feel very happy. And that human being who we saw outside in the same appearance shows his appearance in many other forms. And he explains what face you have today in your physical body outside was not always your face. You had several faces. You are not here for a short time in one life. You have been here for several lifetimes. And look back what you looked like in your last life. Different face, different name, different location, different parents, different karma. Look back further. You had a different face. And I was with you even then. Look at my face that was there. Now you are recognizing me only as the face you saw in this current body outside. These are temporary physical faces. Our real face is inside. It is not, we can make any face which appears to be solid outside, is very flexible inside. It's a new experience for us. We enjoy the experience. We can converse with others, with that human being, with the others, without having to speak any language. We can fly in the sky. We can move at very high speed. They got things that we never did before. Yet they are in time and space. They are creation. They haven't found the creator. We are just in creation of another kind. But very interesting that we can be locked into that creation for as long as we have been locked into this physical creation if that human being who appeared outside, now appearing inside, does not tell us, this is not your place. We have to go within. You say, I am already within. Our experiences are happening within. Not enough. You have to go further within. When you go further within that unusual form of your, you discover you did not have a form at all. The self was different. The self was life. And it had an attachment to it which was operating constantly called the human mind. This is called the causal mind. At that stage, it's still thinking. It's generating everything by thoughts. Whatever it thinks becomes creation. And it's having great experience. And we are using that gadget called mind in a beautiful way. But the human being we saw in the physical world is still there. Now, in the same formless state like we are, we still recognize each other. We recognize all of us. We recognize the whole gambit of characters that have appeared, millions of characters, trillions of characters that have appeared. We have access to all of them. It's a very great experience. 
Never thought we could ever have it. But for the appearance of that human being in our physical life, that this is all happening. We say, now we know where it all came from. We know this is our true home. We were formless. And all we had was the power of thought that created everything. Great discovery. And if we did not have any further guidance from the same human being, we would rest our laurels and say we have attained our true home. It looks like true home. Everything is emerging from there. All creations are taking place from there. We are the creators. We see the power of creation from there. It's a simple method. A universal machine in which we have taken little parts. A universal machine called universal mind. Generating all experiences. We can see the working of the universal mind. Beautiful. We know the secret of creation. Secret of all creation. And then we find we are using only one part of that machine, which is good enough for us. It works for our individual needs and becomes our individual mind and we start using it for individual thoughts. But all thoughts of all creatures, of all creatures, of trillions of them, for all time, for all space, are being generated by that big machine. Very great experience. We found the truth. We found the creator. The creator was the universal mind. We are so happy. That human being who is still with us and we are having good time together examining this big machine says, this is not it. I didn't appear in your life in the human form to bring you here. This you have come earlier also. Many times. And again gone back because you became part of creation again. This machine continuously rolls out creation. You came here, enjoyed it, rolled out again. And again and again. Not every, every year or something. Every few million years of physical time. Every few trillion years of physical time. New universes were created. You went there. Don't think it is your true home. And you say, my friend, you brought me to this ultimate creative power. This is the creator. What else are you going to show me? He says, wait. Go with me now. Because you can't go within anymore. Sorry. Your ability to go within has ended. But now let's go back to that. What you experienced as a human being, when you first met me, you were pulled by something. Do you know what pulled you? What pulled you is the power that will take you now to the next step. What pulled you was a very essential feature of yourself, not of the mind. It's called pure love. Love pulled you. Pure love pulled you. Not regular love what you think was love, but pure love that was pulling you has brought you up to here. It was love that pulled you when I was merely another human being with you. It was love that pulled you when we traveled in the skies of the astral plane, of the sensory systems. It was love that pulled you over here and we are examining these things together because of that love. This love will now pull you. Don't worry, none of your business now. I'll take over. Because I will now reveal to you, just like I was wearing the garment of a human form when I first met you, I was wearing the garment of an astral form, sensory system form, when I took you inside. I wore the garment of a formless form, when I brought you to this causal plane, I am still wearing a form like you, but I am not this. If I were like you, I, we would stay here forever. I am not this. I am not pulling you all the way up to here to keep you here, which you already come before many times. I want you to cross over 
to a place which is your true home, where we belong. And love will pull you there. And gives you experiences which you never had. The source of all experience, I will show you. The source of all light. The source of colors. The source of forms. The source of everything that you ever examined. I'll take you to the source. Even the source of darkness. And then you have an experience which is unimaginable. The experience of the source of light and darkness. A darkness which is for the first time a reality. They never experienced darkness. What we call darkness here is merely the absence of light. You put the light off, it is dark. It doesn't exist. There is no such thing as darkness. It's the absence of light. First time you will see real darkness from where this absence of light can also be created, where duality can be created, source of duality will be shown to you when you examine real darkness. There is no way you could have ever thought of crossing that darkness. But suddenly you find that the light of your friend shines up. Your, you have light too. Your form has light at that time. Light is very important. But the light of your friend at that time shines through. And the love of that person and the light of that, that goes through darkness pulls you, drags you, carries you through the darkness, to the other side of the darkness, and you discover your true home. And you say, my friend, I never realized that this is my true home. This is where we belong. And he says, look around. All life belongs here. We are not alone. We think we are separate. We are not. And suddenly you find that a friend of yours who appeared as a human being was no other than your own self. This arrangement was made by you, yourself, for your own self, for your own real self to appear. You can't go in and see your own self. All right, it will appear in the form of a friend outside. Now, what a key, what an arrangement. I can't imagine a more elaborate system that could be set up by the self to discover itself. There you discover the self, your own true self. But what is the self? Is it one self? Many self? What do we experience in our true home? We find the self, what we call, is not an individual. Here we always thought, this is myself, this is your self, this is myself, and so, so and so. We are separating all everything. We are separating it here, we are separating in the astral sensory plane, we are separating in the causal plane, and suddenly we find, what are we separating? Self is not separate. It's one. Only one self exists. But the self experiences the many in itself. That's how they describe. This is a glass of water. One glass of water, millions of drops, trillions of drops. I could keep on counting more, depending on the size of the drop. It's still the glass of water. One self experiencing individuation within itself and creating the many. Remarkable. Why is it necessary? Why couldn't the whole one self retain itself? Even to have the experience of creation and be conscious. I am totality, I am the self, I have just come to see what I can create through my mind. Why didn't that happen? Because the very nature of that stuff which pulled us, that pure love we talked about, the very nature of this pure love is, it's a love, but not an experience of love. The moment the one becomes the many within itself, it becomes an experience, we generate lovers and beloveds. Unless you have the many, love does not become an experience. It becomes the experience 
with the many. Similarly, other innate nature of our totality also has the same features, the many make it an experience and the very birthplace of what we call experience today is right there in our true home. The manyness in the one is the birthplace of the separation needed for experiencing the very nature of the self. It doesn't stop there. We enhance that experience starting from one self, one totality, one conscious totality, one totality that has a nature called consciousness. What is consciousness? A word being used all over today. Oh, we're talking of consciousness. Be conscious of your body. Be conscious of this thing. That's not consciousness. And not the right English word. What we're talking of as consciousness is merely awareness. Become aware of this, become aware of that. That's not consciousness. Why are we having this separate word? Awareness, consciousness. Consciousness is which can generate awareness of anything. So it's a creative power. It's not merely a capability of becoming aware. That's what the definition is going today about. They are thinking, oh, consciousness means that you are conscious of something. No, you are aware of something. And consciousness is a power that makes you aware. That means, if consciousness is a creative power, and we don't have any real words for it, we have no real word, we have invented word like God, Ishwar, Creator, this thing. We have all words have been created to express the totality of consciousness, the capacity to be conscious of anything, the capacity to be aware of anything. That capacity is called consciousness. The potential for any kind of awareness at any time, at any place, is consciousness. Our self, what we can't define today, is just one totality of consciousness. And to be conscious of ourself, we become conscious of our innate qualities, love, total knowledge, total bliss, total state of utter happiness, which we all desire. So the original innate qualities are all desirable qualities. We all want them because they exist in our original nature. Today we can love somebody because the innate quality of love is there. Today we can create something, innate power of creativity is in ourselves. So these innate qualities are becoming experiences. And as we expand into a new medium of experience, a medium called time and space, the variety of experiences increases. And we are able to see things near and far, here and there. Look at the nature of time and space. If there was no time and space, our awareness was very limited. We couldn't say, we have a past life, there was no past. We couldn't say, I have to go there, there was no there. It would always be a very boring here and now. And there's a beautiful thing that we did not destroy the here and now. Around it, we created there and then. Because if you notice, all of us always are here and now. Nobody has been anywhere else. Every place you are is here at that moment. Every time you are there is now. Here and now are always there. But supposing you are here, you can't be a few inches away, they're there. Then where are you? Where is the here? And if you are in the now, you can't be one minute earlier or one minute later, then where is the time? Do we have any experience? Does anybody have an experience of here and now? Yet we are all in here and now. Can you imagine 
we are in a state of here and now without knowing anything about it and no way to experience it while we are sitting in the physical body. Full knowledge when we discover the here and now are merely created by consciousness in order to create something called there and then. It's just a creation. We have not left our true home. People think all the spiritual journey we are going to take, travel hard and go back somewhere. We don't go back anywhere. Going back is like time and space. If our true home was located somewhere far away in a galaxy, you could say we have to travel to that far off galaxy. No plane exists to take us. We have to find some other way. But that is not true. The galaxies are our creation. They are all been spread out from here and now, making it there and then. So therefore, we are constantly in here and now, in our true home, covering ourselves with a way to expand our awareness of here and now by generating this wonderful medium, wonderful dimension called space and time. Once created, look at the wonderful thing we have done. We created the events. Events happening. Being born, being dying, physical bodies, being born in astral form, dying astral form, being born as minds, dying as minds. All this created because of a beautiful way we have designed here and here and now expanded into there and then. By just expanding into time and space, look at the variety of experiences we have generated. Time and space was a very great generation. How did we do it? <clears throat> Sitting in our here and now, first step was to find how we can generate there. We found there is no way to generate there without first generating time. Time was generated. It was a very first step we built something for the sake of experience which turns out to be a prison house. Time was created so that we could put theirs. We could put distance into that. But when time was created, we got subject to all experiences in time. We defined ourselves that we are unable to use any of our faculties, any of our conscious faculties outside of time. We locked ourselves in. The creation of time was a very big event, the biggest. In terms, if you look at creation, now I'm talking to you something really deep and profound, that if you look at how creation expanded, time came first and has been a trap for us ever since. The Hindi and Sanskrit translation of the word time is Kaal. And Kaal is now being described not as time, as a negative power. That we are positive people trapped in a negative power called Kaal or time. Time was created so that in time we could move to there. Space was a follow-up of time. Scientists are saying today, since Einstein's time, that time and space are one continuum. They are not separate. That you cannot separate time from space. When you say this glass has this dimension, height, width, length, you also have to say how long it's been here. If there was no time, it wouldn't exist. In order to observe the length and breadth and width of this, you have to have time for it to say it exists. Therefore, time is also an ordinate of time space. But if you go deep inside your own self and discover the nature of creation, you'll be surprised. Time had to originate before you could make space.
But once it came, they both began to function together. Beautiful way to use time space and place through consciousness any kind of event on the time space. We didn't need time to create time. Because there was no need of it. We were in a timeless abundance of opportunity of creation. Abundant opportunity of being conscious of anything. When we became conscious of time and space, it was generated at once. How much? How much time did we create? Well, since time was created, was a creation, not a reality. It was a creation like all other creations. The consciousness, the self, remained the only reality. Now creating for experience, for conscious experience, for becoming aware. We became aware of time, space, and we came up with a beautiful concept of the size of time and space. And this concept was generated and placed in our minds, which were added on for experiencing time and space. Mind was added on. The concept was infinite. Good word. Not, added, not only as a word. Look at the beauty of the concept. That time is infinite. Which means you can go on and on into the past. It never end. Absolutely endless. Who could imagine that something that never existed suddenly became endless? In one instant. No time, suddenly infinite time. Infinite space. Infinite space, infinite time. Keep on putting as many events as you like, unlimited. This whole scope of creating an unlimited creation came up simply by the single concept of infinite time and infinite space. But the entire infinite time was created in one go. Can we measure infinity? People say, how can you measure? You can go as far as you like, there's more time. If you go as far back in the past, what happened before that? More time. You go to space, go to the end of space, what is beyond that? More space. How can you measure it? As education of the mind grew and people with innate inside knowledge began to come, one wonderful guy came up. He said, I know how to measure it. I can measure infinity, but not the way you want to measure it, by going into this. I'll measure it mathematically, because I can measure everything through higher mathematics. Where is the mathematics coming from that you are talking about? It comes from the causal plane. We don't use it here, but I can express it here. Can you imagine a mathematician comes out with a formula by which you can measure and declare what infinite time is. If you don't know it, I can explain it to you, how we measure. He said, supposing you take the number one and add to it half of it, it will become one and a half. Then you make half of half, it becomes a quarter. Then you make half of that, one eighth, keep on making half, it will be infinite. You can keep on making half forever. But I can tell you in mathematics, if it is infinite, it will be two. Mathematically proven, QED, nobody could challenge. There is really infinity, it will stop. And it only stop at infinity, not earlier. So, when Socrates, the Greek philosopher, was here, and his disciple Plato, who was more intellectual than Socrates, they began to design a wonderful, perfect government. What a government of state should be like. And they said, what are the weaknesses of our governments today? 
weaknesses are people who govern have got relatives, friends, and they all want to help those friends and relatives. It's not a fair government. Government should be fair. So they proposed an ideal perfect republic. And the republic would consist of 200 governors. That's the proposal if you read the Plato's Republic, you would find they proposed that there should be a republic of 200 governors and those governors should be picked up as little kids from different families and removed from the families. So none of them should know who is their parent, who is their relative and kept in isolation from everybody and given training. Most important training for the first 20 years, gymnastics, build up their bodies, train them in language, train them in understanding things, languages, this thing. Then they said, teach them higher things, philosophy, and finally, mathematics. They saw the possibility that mathematics is going to solve problems which others cannot solve, or the logic cannot solve. Logic, philosophy will not solve, but mathematics will solve. So why I'm mentioning this to you, it's an interesting study, how they design these governors to learn mathematics at a later stage is a very important subject. Because mathematics could explain infinity, which could not be explained otherwise. But it's a beautiful setup in creation that we could put unlimited events, create unlimited past lives, unlimited future lives. What a trap on time. If it was not infinite or limited, it would be a very limited trap. Time finishes, we go home. No, it was unlimited. Here we are generating an experience for ourselves because we are consciousness and we have to be conscious of something to be conscious. Therefore, our very nature of being conscious or aware of things is generating experiences and we have created experiences and then at certain time created time and space, bound ourselves in time and space and then started using not ourself, not consciousness to be conscious of the experience, but the machine that we borrowed, little instrument that we borrowed from the universal mind, put into our individual heads as our thinking mind and are using thinking mind to operate our knowledge of this creation in time and space. What a double mammy it is. First of all, we forget who we are. Start thinking the mind is ourself because that's the only instrument we are using to experience things. Mind was able to experience things very fast. Mind is a very fast operator. You all know it, how it thinks. You sit inside your head in meditation and watch your mind thinking. Don't think. Don't become the mind for a little while. At least for 15, 20 minutes, say, I am not going to be the mind. I am not going to think. I am going to watch the mind thinking. I will not even guide the mind what to think. I'll just sit and watch. I'll be quiet in stillness and watch what the mind does. And you will see how quickly the mind will think, how bizarre the thought will be. That's the machine we are using for all our experiences. And that machine ties us down to its own rules, own rules, own logic. Or that doesn't make sense. It's not logical. I don't understand it. You understand everything, the mind doesn't. You are saying, I don't understand it. You identify yourself with the mind. What a trap. Completely forgetting who we are. How are we identifying ourselves with something, but it works very fast, too fast. So we slow it down by another addition of other equipment around us, a beautiful equipment which surround us. We have the self, the mind operating, we put it in time space, so we put it around us and then we surround ourselves with what is called sense perceptions, astral self. By the way, some people think there is an astral body we have. It is not a body. 
it's merely the ability to have sense perceptions without physical matter. That's called astral self. Sense perceptions are the astral self. So we surround ourselves. What happens? What the mind could perceive so fast, we now break it up. I can see it. I can hear it. I can touch it. I can taste it. All separate. Same perception, which is available immediately to us, broken down. And it's wonderful. We have great sensory experiences. But they are not what we like to see solidity in reality. How do we make it? Another one step more. Introduce matter into the astral self. Simple. Cover the astral self in matter. And lay down the arrangement how it is to be covered. The astral self moving around, it goes to the mother, to the pregnant to the mother's home, and is born as a child, picking up everything as it develops as an embryo, as a fetus, and develops everything according to what it needs as an astral self. And born, baby is born with a destiny carried by the astral self with a much longer life, short life in a physical form. What's the difference between the astral form and physical form of a person or a human being or an, or an entity, conscious entity? Merely the addition of matter, atoms, molecules, all the little elements of matter, that's all. Do we really add matter or we just think we have added? We don't have to really, just like I said, we are really here and now. We think there is here, there, and then also. It's just an experience. Otherwise, we are always here and now. Similarly, we are always astral self, not physical, but we create the awareness of physicality by converting astral energy, if you might call it, into matter. This is not something I am making up now. This is what everybody is now finding out. The quantum physics has messed up the people's heads in science. It was just discovery, accidental discovery, that light appears to be a very important subject. People talking of spirituality talk of light, very big light inside. What is light? We are all seeing light coming from the lamps, light coming from here. Light, if there is no light, we can't see anything. It's so important. What is light? They had to design special microscopes, finest electronic microscopes to study light. Only very recently they were able to see the particles of light moving, they call photons. They had taken picture first time. Just like they take taken a picture of the black hole first time, they take taken pictures recently of the photons. Photons are moving, that's light. What is a photon? Oh, people began to guess 50 years ago. Is it a wave or is it a particle? A wave is energy, particle is matter. Is it energy or matter? A strange discovery was made, you all know about it, that the quantum mechanics would develop from there that if the photons are passed without your observing it, they are waves. If you observe or measure, they become particles. Human observation is making energy into matter. Is it only photons or all the creation? They come to photons so far. Another 20 years, they'll come to all creation being created the same way. It is observation of consciousness that generating all experience, what we call matter. Otherwise, energy. Energy can't be seen. But then, we have studied energy a lot, as we can see. Scientists have seen 
that energy that we observe outside really exists because something happened to generate the energy in time and space. So much so, for years and years, for decades they believed that there was something called a Big Bang that generated all the energy. And from the energy, slowly, matter has come in stages. Not all at once. Matter was very simple. One atom of hydrogen. Simplest. One electron roaming around. Why was it roaming around? If electron is an energy, electric charge only, how come it decided to roam around? They couldn't find out any answer why an electron roams around in circular motion around the nucleus. Then they find not only the electron is roaming around, the planet Earth we are living on is roaming around, the sun, the moon is roaming around, all planets are roaming around, our whole solar system is roaming around, galaxies are roaming around, everything is moving in circular motion. Why? What is giving the push to all of them? They couldn't find. They used a word which caused big problem for Einstein. The word was gravity. It's the power of gravity that doing everything. Till today they are not sure what gravity is. It's a power. Power of gravity was able to twist it. If it had some pull, was the nucleus able to pull something which we call gravity? A guy came, Newton came and said, yes, apple fell to the ground, ground was big, apple was small, ground pulled the apple. Everybody believed him. The big things pull small things and that because of a thing called gravity. They could even measure at what rate the apple fell. So they could define gravity even better. It's just a pull. <laughs> Great guy Einstein comes and says, I, Newton is wrong. It's not that. Because where does this matter come from in the first place? How do you generate from energy? It has to be something much more than this. And he came up with a new concept. What we call space doesn't exist. If there was no matter, there would be no space. He came up with strangest ideas. In first talk he gave was his special relativity. Fifty scientists were there and he explained space is created by energy becoming matter and the matter creates space. Space is curved by more matter. He said, what is he talking about? He said, do you understand what I'm saying? Only one guy got up out of those fifty in his first lecture and said, I understand. And then he sat down, now I will not understand. <laughs> A glimpse came to him for one instant. What is he talking about? He said, apple did not fall because the earth was big and the apple was small. Apple fell because the big earth created a curvature in space and in the curvature the apple slipped down. Nobody understood. Today everybody understands. Einstein was right. All experiments show that there is a curvature in space created by matter. The more matter, the more curvature. But then they saw that when you create matter from energy today in a lab, you convert energy into matter, it creates something else called antimatter. Simultaneously. What is matter? Where the electron running around the nucleus is negative power. What is antimatter? The electron running around it is positive. That's all. But if you put one unit of matter along with antimatter, they 
immediately finish each other and become energy again. They eat, eat each other up. This is science. This is physics. And physics says that if this were so, as soon as the world was created, the matter, anti-matter should have finished each other. There should be none of us should be here. How are we here? How did we survive? How did matter survive? Where did the anti-matter go? Search is going on. Where is it hidden somewhere? How did it slip away and not destroy the matter? And therefore, it's very difficult to prove that gravity was just merely putting electric charge around a nucleus. No, that was not true. There must be more than gravity. It is creating such revolutions all over. But there, so much space is outside that there is no justification for huge space to exist and create the gravity of the whole galaxy is moving around. Where is that power coming from? Where is that matter that can move galaxies around? What kind of gravity is that? Can't find out. For the time being, they have said, let us Go with the observation, there is some matter which we can't see, we don't know where it is, it's called dark matter. Dark matter means we don't know. And there is dark energy also existing, which is converting into dark matter, we can't see it. How much can we see? Every telescope makes us go further into the past. With what we can see with today's telescopes, we can see so much that we cannot imagine this vastness existing. Because they have no idea of what infinite space means. This vastness that they are discovering, the infinity they are discovering, cannot exist unless there is more dark matter than matter. Some years ago they said maybe 50-50. Then last reading 17% is only matter. The rest dark. Now they say 6%, perhaps matter, rest dark. Where is that? I am telling you the difficulty science is facing today because of observation. Einstein's last notes when he died was, I did not give enough attention to the role of an observer in all the scientific experiments I did. Because the quantum mechanics had already come into his knowledge and he could not justify that how is the human observation is creating everything. But I am sharing with you, the whole universe is nothing but our conscious observation at all levels of creation. And I am not saying that this is just a theoretical model I am setting up for you. I am saying you want to know this truth for certain, go within your own setting, not outside. If you go within, you discover the whole nature of creation. You discover what the scientists will discover 100 years later. You discover today. You can go within and find out the reality of this existence. You will find out how the laws of nature are operating here. You will also find out how the laws of nature operate very differently at other experiences of consciousness. This is just one experience. The wakeful experience sitting in a human body is just one experience. There are so many other experiences. Let me go into experience we all have. Go to sleep and dream. That's also an experience. In the dream, we see, we touch, we taste, we do all those things. Dream, we use all our sense perceptions. But when we are dreaming, we are not aware of the physical form. We think the form which is moving around in the dream is our self. When we wake up, we know we made a mistake. That was not our self, that was a dream body. But while the dream is going on, we are sure that's our self moving around. Why, do we, why are we so sure? We are so sure because the self that is in this body is the same self that is in the dream body. Body is different, self is the same. 
we never feel that somebody else is moving uh, by self and a dream. I was moving in the dream. Always. Without exception. Can you imagine if our form changes, self does not change. If you examine more carefully, you will notice everything will change at every level of creation except the self. The self, the experiencer will never change. He will take different forms. In the dream, when we are in one place, we are in Chicago, next minute we are in New York, then we are somewhere else, looks absolutely normal. Nobody has ever questioned while dreaming. How come I have jumped suddenly to another location? If you jumped now in the physical plane, you would freak out. How come I was in Chicago and suddenly New York has come? Dream is normal. Which means even the laws of nature that operate are different in the dream level and different in the physical wakeful level. Similarly, they are different at other levels of awareness. When you pull yourself within yourself, by simple meditation process. Meditation is nothing more than meditating upon yourself. That means thinking about own self, who am I, who is myself, not body, not senses, not thinking. Who am I who is thinking? Who am I that's looking? Who am I who is hearing? Who am I living? Who am I? Where am I? Put these questions if you meditate by shutting out the experience temporarily outside, you begin to discover what is inside. It's simple. That's meditation. Meditation on the self. To keep on meditating on the self, you keep on finding out the self has never changed. The experience of self has changed continuously. So that is why we are taking experience to be more real than our self. What a, what a blunder we made that the thing that never changes should be less real than the thing that are changing. Things that are changing outside, we take them as real. And the one that experiences those things, oh, one day I will die. See, one who is making the body alive, in which you can see, is not the one that will die. The body will die. And we say, I will die. What an identification with an experience. The body is an experience of the self. And we are taking the body to be so real, it will die. But we, will, we don't know what will happen to us. We don't know what will happen, whether we will be there or not. What a lack of information about our own self. And so much emphasis of experience of what is being generated outside. So meditation is a means of pulling your attention, conscious attention, within yourself to discover who you are. Apart from the covers which you are using, apart from the physical body, apart from the sense perceptions, apart from the mind, apart from thinking, who are you? Meditation is to go deeper and deeper because you will find the self is using these from within. Never from outside. Nobody says, I am sitting here, I, I, I am using my body there. You are always sitting inside the body you are using. In the dreams, you are always inside the dream body you are using. Astral plane, you are always inside the body you are using. In the mind alone, you are in the mind, using it as your mind. You are the self. Using things around, outside yourself, not inside, not somewhere else. Therefore, the way to discover the self is simple. Go within your own self, whatever form you have. Go within that form. If you find another form, go within that form. The more you go within, the more you'll get closer to the one who's experiencing that form and experience generated by that form. So, so when we meditate, we get answer to these questions. Science discovered this much later. I remember some things I could see and show a great master's disciple. I would sit and say, Master, this is going to happen. 
He says, don't tell them. Let them work in science. <laughs> and science is now coming up with the very same things. Some of these things by mistake I spoke out in some meetings. But they happened. Science took 50 years to discover them. You want to know the reality of this universe. Go inside. You want to know what is, does alien life exist? Why guess about it? Why wait for 500 billion signals are being sent all around space and no reply is coming? Maybe we are the only living species on a little small planet in one place? No. One day you'll find more signals will come which took a billion years to come. From, from civilization, many have come and gone. Many are there. They, we are trapped in time. So we can't even have access to them right now. But we discover all this. Why not go inside in your causal form? Travel at speeds way beyond the speed of light. And go and check it out. Do you see alien life? Why are human beings trying to guess? I think aliens come in little round those round ships or something. They come up in spaceships and they made designs of spaceships and their E.T. comes with big eyes and small body. Where do these thoughts come to us from? Where do these thoughts, thoughts come from causal place? Even the thought that such a thing can exist is coming from what is existing. I can tell you that. But imagine the beauty of a journey within yourself that if you are interested in investigating the outside, go inside to find more of the outside. Nothing can satisfy you more in your curiosity to discover either the reality of your own self or the reality of creation than meditating and going within yourself. That's why if you know the possibilities of what you can get through meditation, you will all jump at it. Why don't you jump at it? You don't believe me? You don't think it exists? I keep on saying, okay, you don't believe me, check it for yourself. Don't take my word for it. You find out for yourself. This is not something to believe somebody, something to experience yourself. So go within yourself and find. I get hundreds of emails every day. It's very difficult to go in, very difficult to do. I have this work to do, I have that work to do. All the work we have to do here in a short life is occupying our attention and discovering of who we are. We have no time and it's a second grade thing. We don't know if it is sure or not. We have to believe, but we don't want to believe one thing without seeing. And we can't see without believing. Oh, there's a big problem, it's a catch. And every time we want to go inside, the mind runs amok and takes us outside. We can't meditate. The mind is too much in control. The mind is doing its job. The mind was supposed to generate and experience what's created. The mind was supposed to keep you out. It's doing a good job. Why are you blaming the mind? Why are you blaming an instrument? A computer works in a certain way. We designed it to work in that way. We don't blame the computer while doing that. The mind is like a computer. They designed to generate experiences and experience it, uh, enable the consciousness through the mind to experience in time and space. What is wrong with it? Mind will do that. But why do you want to become the mind? Why don't you say, now computer, you rest, I want to see something else. Why don't you realize you are not the mind? It's a machine inside our head. It's an organic machine operating inside just to help us think, just to help us create experiences and generate a conscious awareness of those experiences. Just a machine to create that. It's not us. Is not the self. At least go to that point to sit inside. Wherever you think you are, 
as unit of consciousness, not mind, not unit of thought, not unit of any memories of sense perceptions, not unit of anything outside, just who is observing everything. Who am I if I am not the body, the senses, or the mind? With that notion, where am I if I am that? Just go to that place. And I can tell you it's very clearly in a human body, it's sitting right behind the eyes. That place is not difficult to define. We all know it where it is. When we are looking at this world, in order to experience time and space, we have created a body to experience time and space. The body itself, the head, this part, from the chin to the top, very important part of the body. Rest is important for energy purposes and so on, for working, moving, this thing, doing various things, so operating through the energy center placed below, six energy centers operating in the rest of the body. But this portion, how are we observing time and space? Two eyes seeing two different pictures, combining them to create distance. Distance will not be experienced if we didn't have two eyes. Now we we be sure of distance because we are seeing two images. Two eyes are never seeing the same thing. They are placed differently. They combine the image. Where do they combine it? From where are we seeing one image that is actually in the eye, two images, in the eye, retina, there are two images, and we are seeing one. Where does it combine? Have you ever noticed, you close your eyes, where do I see from? One image. Then we go to 3D movie, they give you glasses to wear. So we know how we combine. Where do we combine without those glasses? In looking at the world, we combine behind the eyes, the center of the head, third eye center. Where are we thinking from? Third eye center. Where are we feeling we are? As units of consciousness, third eye center. We know where it is. Why do we have two ears? We could have had one ear. One ear would never give us sense of direction. Two ear, a sound is coming from here, it's coming from there, he's speaking here. Time and space are being fully utilized as an experience for the structure of our body. Two eyes, two ears, and then you have the mouth to speak, you have the nose to smell. Look at the bulk of your, the most sensitive part in terms of the skin, the tact tactile sense in the skin, in the lips. Maximum number of those cells, which are the taste cells, which are sensitive, are right here, all in this form. Rest of the body is attached to us. We have the head, rest of the body we are using for physical experience. So if you realize where we are sitting, it should not be difficult to know, go to the place from where we are operating. Third eye center, the state of wakeful location. A notional location that we are aware of right now. Of course, are we not there when we are sleeping? What happens to us? When we are thinking, looking with these eyes, we are there. What about the eyes in the dream that we are using? We are really not there. Our consciousness drops. Not the notional location behind the eyes at third eye center is only there in the wakeful state. Not any other state. Neither higher nor lower. Only we are in a wakeful human state, we are at third eye center. Therefore, when you are in a wakeful human state, you can meditate at third eye center. No other stage. What happens when you go to sleep? You have a dream. A dream body is running around. You feel you are inside the dream body. What is happening to your notional state of the physical body, which is still alive and lying in bed? It's moving down here. It's come down throat. You have a dream. Supposing you are having a dream and somebody suddenly says, touch your eyes. And you suddenly want to touch your eyes. Do you know where you touch? Throat. Test it out. 
Okay, don't, don't worry about waking up anybody, yourself. When you are going to sleep at night, feeling half very sleepy, touch your eyes. In a wakeful state, we all can touch our eyes with eyes closed. We know where they are. When you are half asleep, touch your eyes, you touch your nose and think that you are touching your eyes. You will test it out. So, notional point where we are operating as conscious beings in a form, a physical form, is known to us. That being so, just withdraw attention to that point. Think of that point. Imagine you are there. Imagine what you are doing there. Spend time on that. You will meditate. Meditation should not be made into a ritual. Oh, I meditate two and a half hours. My master told me to do it. I've been doing it all my life. What did you get out of it? Nothing yet, but maybe next life. I said you could have stayed in religion. They also promised next life. The whole purpose of going to a perfect living master, whom I have been describing as the human being who comes into our life, is to get something now. Here and now. Discover the truth now. If you have to wait for next life, every religious promise is next life. Stay there. Find out now. Use this great opportunity to discover who you are. Discover the nature of creation. Discover how you are operating in it. Discover who that human being was who came and had awareness and brought outside awareness which was your own awareness appearing outside. Study all these things. Everything I've shared with you today is all experienceable by a human being who's keen to meditate and discover the truth. And I have a good feeling that you're all trying to discover the same thing. I am only sharing experiences based upon the simple methods taught to me by my master, whose pictures see here, Azul Maharaj Baba, Sahabat Singh Ji, he is a perfect master who appeared in my life and did the same thing that I am telling you about. I am very happy that you listened to me very patiently, very peacefully. I hope these little tips I gave you will be helpful in your own spiritual journeys. I will come and see you again. Uh, it's 2.30, about 3.30. I'll see you for a little while, 3.30. I believe there are some snacks up there. Yes, I can see tables. <laughs> Enjoy some snacks that are here. And I'll see you 3.30. Spend a little time more with you. And then we'll meet again next month. Thank you very much. <laughs>